In recent years, I have wondered whether it's any longer proper to say that bankruptcy courts are courts of equity. Of course, we would all say that, oh, the Supreme Court said long ago that bankruptcy courts are courts of equity. But that's not exactly what the Supreme Court said in 1934 in Local Loan versus Hunt. The High Court said that bankruptcy courts are essentially courts of equity. And I guess the word essentially is a big deal. In more recent years, bankruptcy courts themselves, as well as appellate courts, have said that bankruptcy courts cannot use their, let's call it, freewheeling sense of equity to do what's right or what they think is right if it conflicts with the statute. However, there are instances when the statute is not so clear and bankruptcy courts exercise their discretion, or perhaps let's call it equitable powers, to do what they think is right. I have a couple of good examples just of that. First, we have bankruptcy judge Karen Jenneman in Orlando, Florida, dealt with the question of the homestead exemption in Florida for someone who was not a legal resident of the United States. Well, in Florida, at least, if you are not a legal resident, you do not meet the subjective requirement to have a Florida homestead exemption because you are not entitled to live permanently in the United States. In that case, however, the debtor's daughter was in the DACA program and, although not a U.S. citizen, she had married a U.S. citizen and, on those two bases, the daughter hoped, and the word is hoped, someday to become a U.S. resident. Judge Gentleman said that that circumstance, that is, the daughter's circumstance of hoping to be a permanent resident, was sufficient for the mother to have a valid Florida homestead exemption because the daughter lived in the home of the mother and, in effect, the Florida homestead exemption would be protecting someone who hoped to become a permanent resident ultimately. The second case along the same lines, different subject altogether, was by bankruptcy judge Benjamin Kahn in Durham, North Carolina. This case dealt with eligibility to be a small business debtor. The debtor in this particular case had scads of debt, uh, more than half, that arose from a defunct business. That business was no longer operating, and the debtor was, at that time, not running a business uh, that she owned, with a qualification I'll get to in a minute. Judge Kahn first said, and joining the majority, that you must be currently engaged in business to be a uh, SBRA debtor, having formerly been engaged in business through a defunct company, didn't qualify. However, and this was important, this particular debtor was working part-time as a consultant, in effect, running her own sole proprietorship. So, Judge Kahn told us that her work as a sole proprietor, even though she was employed as an employee full-time by another company, would entitle her to qualify for the SBRA and its liberal treatment and capacity to confirm Chapter 11 plans. I am Bill Rochelle, the editor-at-large for American Bankruptcy Institute. You can read about these stories and others in my column on the ABI website, Rochelle's Daily Letter. Meanwhile, I will return same time next week with something interesting in the world of bankruptcy. Until then, good day, be well, stay safe.